Hey guys, Charles Rudabaugh is back with a great training for you. Pay attention to this one. This is your DMO training. This is your daily method of operations training. It's like, what do I do? What do I even do during the day? Okay, I'm a network marketer. What are, what's my daily activities? Right, I need to call my team. Who do I even call first? Right, what are my, how do I prioritize activities? What's an activity? What's productivity? Certain things keep you busy, but don't make you money. You want to be productive, right? So daily methods, so I'm going to go over just a handful of things. So I got some notes right here in front of me and I'm going to go through this and I got it real structured. So check this out. So number one, first thing in the morning in our group anyways, that you want to do right away is call one to five of your end palms. What's an end palm? An end palm is the newest possibility of momentum. An end palm is the newest person, most excited rep on your team. They're the newest, most excited rep on your team. They're where the newest possibility of momentum will come from the newest possibility others oh, there's a lot of momentum possibilities going on in the group everywhere but then this is where the newest possibility of momentum can happen is through a brand new person who has a brand new fresh list of people to share with and so we want to call one to five of those right in the morning when we wake up and we're going to promote our group launch call or promote the breakfast of champions calls right so we're promoting the group launch call to get them launched. If they haven't been launched, we want to make sure they know how important it is to get launched. And if they've been launched or either way, we're promoting the breakfast of champions call and making an announcement on a bulletin board or sending a text message is not promoting. So you want to call one to five. You don't need to call 30. If you had 30 people join your team last week, but you want to call one to five people every morning, make a few phone calls to get people fired up about the breakfast of champions call to get them on and let them know that you care. So that's the first thing we're doing in the morning, right? If we just start sending out text messages and that's the, that's the way they hear about it, then you're starting to teach them that promoting is through text messages, but that's not the case, right? We want to be making phone calls to get our new people on the Breakfast of Champions and get our new people on the launch calls, right? So that's a top priority right away. First thing when you wake up. Next priority is follow up from the sign-in sheets, right? That's something you want to schedule like an hour a day. Just block it off. Nothing gets in the way. Nothing gets interrupted. You don't, you're not checking your phone and the alerts that are coming in. You're just making calls from the sign-in sheets that you've get, that you've gathered from the PBRs that you've done. Maybe you don't have an hour a day to do follow-up, but you have an hour every few days or every two or three days or every couple days, you're going to schedule some time for follow-up. That's when you're going to dig out all of those last uh, sign-in sheets you've had from the previous PBRs where you've done PBRs and been speaking at, and you got those sign-in sheets and you can make all those follow-up calls. So this is the time I would allot for, you know, daily for making those follow-up calls. I would have had like an hour a day. That's a priority. That's early in the day. That's a priority time. You don't want to leave that towards later if you can just fit it in. That's a priority time slot, right? At least Sunday and Monday, right? At least Sunday and Monday when you're promoting because maybe, you know, you're not going to wait till Tuesday morning last minute to promote the, the DFY event. You want to at least Sunday, Monday, you're making follow-up calls from those signing sheets. So that's a priority. Next, number three priority, copy, paste, sending. You've got reps that are getting a hold of you, doing, you know, they're trying to help get help with the language. So copy, paste, send in with the language, send it over to them, ghost writing. So ghost writing is a priority, but it, it's not the most important priority right when you wake up in the morning, the first to, to handle unanswered texts. The first priority is to make phone calls to promote for breakfast of champions. The second priority is to make all the phone calls you need to promote into the DFY off of signing sheets, following up with people from the PBRs, not just leaving that in the hands of the hosts, right? And the number three priority would be sending out those copy paste sends. You got some people that sent you messages over the evening at night. You didn't have time to get back to it. You're doing PBRs. So you're going to leave any, any text messages fulfilled. You want to fulfill every lingering copy paste send text message and get all of those off your plate because more will come in during the day that you're going to help people with, right? So helping the new reps with the language and being consistent about it is so important. I have that in my notes right here. Like you don't want to leave reps hanging too long when they're trying to get help with language and their text conversations die out, right? I mean, we want to get back to them pretty quickly when they're getting help with language, right? And so that's, that's a real key. But you also don't want to get caught up doing copy paste sending all day and especially not for the right people. You want to be knowing who you're working with, right? Downlines before sidelines, projects before random anybody. We're not chasing volume. We're building projects, building leaders, right? So next is, next is a priority in your business is putting out fires. You know, you, there's a certain amount of fires you have to put out, right? Let me tell you this, you know, some fires have to be put out immediately, but other stuff can wait till later. It'll die out on its own. It's not immediate. So understanding where that balance is. 
And just know this, that if you don't have fires to put out, you don't have a professional organization in network marketing. But if all you do is spend your time on those putting fires out, it's going to consume your day. You're not going to have fun and you won't have a team. You know what I mean? You got to spend time building a new team, not just dealing with muck from people that want to screw it up from not being coachable, right? So a certain amount of stuff, we got to put it out and handle it because we want people to move forward and we want certain people to really, we don't want to let them go off of some silly mistake or whatever. We want to put out fires, get people moving forward again, but focus on the people that are new and excited. That's your priority. This is number four. This is down on the list, right? And then you've got calling your leaders. You got projects. You got calling your leader projects. We got to do a certain amount of supporting our leaders, but that's not our priority is like managing our leaders. We got other things, and this is like later on in the day. We're we're handling end palms first, promoting the events, right? We're 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 doing copy paste sending. That's a priority, right? Putting out certain fires, but calling our leaders, making sure they're supported, making sure they have everything they need, making sure they have the right game plan moving forward, knowing what's going on the next few two, three, four days, week. They got things mapped out. They're on the right track. They don't have anything holding them back. So really, your leader projects. You're gonna have one to five maybe real solid. You know, projects that you're, you're, they're under your wing. You're bringing them up. They're shadowing you. You're having high communication, very high communication with those leader projects, you know, daily. But that's not the top of your priority. This is managing reps. The, the top priority is working with the brand new people under those leaders so that later on in the day, when you get to priority five and you're talking to those leaders about what's going on, you can give them updates of some of the great things that you've gotten productive with in their downlines. You worked with some of their in palms under them and you're able to tell them the good news that we got a PDR scheduled for Doug. You know, and that's one of his brand new reps who's, oh, he's excited, now you're a leader, you're doing work for him. So that's the key. Next priority is every day this is a priority, is adding people to your list. But first thing you wake up in the morning, you're not gonna go out and go try to go prospecting, right? Like you got people to work with in your downline to work with the end palms. But if you're trying to drum up new business, create new business, you wanna, you gotta always be adding new people to your list every day always taking people off your list every day. So, you know, priority six, adding two people to your list every day. Two people a day keeps the bank account, you know, the bankers away. You know what I mean? Like as long as you're adding people to your list every day, peaking, you're going to keep your, your skills sharp and you're adding people to your list. And then number two is taking two people off the list every day, right? And so making personal phone calls, personal inviting, personal recruiting, phase one, Sponsoring is a key priority in any professional network marketer's business daily, but it's not number one, it's not number two, right? Multiplying our business, working with the end palms, making sure they're getting supported and launched is the key priority. But five, six, seven, you're on your priority list coming down, you do gotta make those personal phone calls. You do gotta, you know, fulfill the unanswered text messages from your list so we can do sponsoring, personal sponsoring. But I would say maybe 10 to 30% of your personal time would be in personal phase one sponsoring ship where 90 to 70%, I mean, majority of your time is in working with the downline, with the, with the new people, those end palms. Right next is Project Lazarus, right? It's like waking up the dead. Last on your list, but you know, there's people in your team that they signed up and they don't even know what they signed up in. They don't even know what, why they signed up. Someone signed them up as a silent partner, didn't even tell them what they were signing up in. And so there's key times in your business when you have a big initiative going on or you've got a big product launch happening or there's some big announcements happening that you know are going to be huge and you don't want to leave people behind. You know, you got your out of town guest speakers, leaders coming into town. You don't want to leave people behind. We have a rule in Team Fusion. We don't leave anyone behind. So periodically, maybe every few months or every six months or every year at least, you're cycling through your entire downline, calling everybody with an active position and seeing if they're not the right time now to get started, to get activated, to get going again. The good news is they've already got a position. You know what I mean? And, and people fall out for different reasons, get distracted in life, you know, things could get in the way in their life and they want to get back into this. Maybe there's people you're going to call that they've been wanting to get back in, but you know, they just maybe feel uncomfortable making the phone call saying, Hey, I want to get going again. They feel nervous. They feel bad. Like they've, they've quit already and, but they want to get going and you're like, Hey, look, you reach out, connect to them. They might be like, Hey, look, oh my gosh, I've been thinking about getting involved. I wasn't sure who to reach out to though. And you know, so you're like, let's work together. If I can help you make an extra thousand dollars this month, would you want to get going again? Yeah, let's get it going. Cool. We relaunch them, get them on the breakfast of champions, get them plugged in again, get their, you know, get them going and we can get people ramped up. And, and you're like, we're launching a huge, we have a major initiative, a major launch happening in our company coming up next month. You know, we're calling everyone in the team. We're not leaving anybody behind. Everyone's going to have an opportunity to be in on this. So that's the key, you know, maybe 30% of your time project Lazarus, but it's only at key times. We want to focus on new blood. 
You know what I mean? Everyone knows my number. All my team has my number. They know when the Breakfast of Champions call number, so they can come back whenever they want. But certain times we do want to reach out and just let people know we're still here. And then I would say, you know, maybe priority number 10, last would be tap rooting. I'm sorry, with team communication, I'm going to talk about tap rooting next. But like, who do I even call to tap root, right? But team communication, posting, you know, liking things on Facebook, commenting, welcome to the team on Facebook, commenting, you know, commenting, congratulations on your promotions on textbook, you know, putting an update on, 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 on you know, your group that you have and letting them know your schedule, you know what I mean? Stuff like that, you're communicating with the entire group. That's a key, maybe 1% of your time. Maybe 1% of your time is, you know, adding, is commenting on Facebook and liking things on the group, you know, watching the YouTube videos and, you know, making a comment of the group stuff. But liking and commenting, I mean, text, it's fun to do texting with your leaders and, and commenting on Facebook. But, you know, we want to make people feel special, but we also want to make sure we're staying productive, right? And that's activity time. That's not productive time. So... Who do we call when we want to tap root? We've got these leaders, these key projects in our team. We want to work. Okay, so that's all the list we've been through, top 10 priorities. But we want to really get to tap rooting. This is a priority. Who am I going to work with today? I want to help. I want to wake up today. Who can I call to help make money? Well, I did a video, another one of my videos on tap rooting and how to tap root and go who to find in your team. So check out that video. You find the person in your team you want to tap root and we're going to schedule a PBR with them. We're going to connect with them. You know, you're going to say, you know, hey, I want to help you make money this month. Can we schedule some power hours or some PBRs, right? You schedule a power hour with that person you want to tap root. You're going to make some phone calls, text messages, get into their list, drum up some activity, get some activity forced into the pipeline. And now you've tap rooted them. Now you're on the phone. Now we've got moved through them to their contacts. And now we've got three-way calls to do, right? So three-way calls, I would say, are probably 50% of your time. You know, you want to probably schedule 50% of your time doing three-way calls. That's the real productivity. That's where you're really going to get your income bringing activities up for the day. You can do three, four, three-way calls in a day. You might not be doing three presentations in a day, but three-way calls when you're on the phone with your prospect, you know, your, your rep, your brand new rep and their prospect, their potential, you know, their guest, and you're three-way calling and answering questions and handling objections. Three-way calling is probably what you want to spend 50% of your day on. And a three-way call is a priority call that interrupts anything else you're doing except maybe your one hour of time blocked follow-ups. That's like nothing gets in the way of that. So you're scheduling three-way calls all throughout the day as, as quick as you can get them, as many as you can get them, whenever you can get them, three-way calls all day. And so three-way calls is the key. And so when you're tap rooting, that's what you're really wanting to set up with these people you're tap rooting is three-way calls with their projects, their potential projects, their prospects, their people that they're putting in the pipeline doing doing three-way calls for them. And then when, the, when you're doing jade hunting, like at the end of the month, you're jade hunting. And I did a video, another YouTube video you can check out on jade hunting and the difference of what jade hunting is. And you're going through the downline looking for someone who's close to jade and helping them. Hey, look, we just got to get you one more rep and you're going to be a jade. Or we just get your two reps away. Two people join your team. You're a couple customers away from going jade. And so we're going to find people that are close to jade, call them up, ask them what they need from us to help support them, let them know how close they are, help them explain what they got to do, then help facilitate that, set up the three-way calls or PBRs or two-on-ones or whatever to help tap with them to help force out their jade promotion to create jade. So jade hunting, you're identifying your potential leaders. These are the, you have your, your, your real projects you're calling to tap root. But when you're tap rooting, you're, you're setting up, you're calling these potential projects. These future projects, these ones that are so close to Jade, and they might not be the end palm, but there's someone because you worked with the end palm below them and you're working with the leader above them, but this is a potential project and you're calling them, hey, look, we only got you one more rep and we can get you to Jade. So Jade hunting is really where you're gonna spend a lot of your time identifying these potential projects, calling them, asking them what you can do to help support them, asking when we can schedule a PBR, asking when we can schedule a power hour, saying, hey, look, do we have anyone we can sign up on your team? to get you promoted, you're so close to Jade. So Jade hunting, scheduling PBRs and power hours. And then all of this is what we're doing. All of these things we're doing, the whole goal of all of it is just to create income bringing activities, right? The goal is to create income bringing activities, right? Activities that are gonna bring you income. So these people were calling, making fall calls, supporting, follow-ups, is to generate exposures, to generate people coming to presentations so we have more follow-ups, so that we have you know three-way calls to do with people, following up, signing people up, launching them, so that we can promote in the mornings, promoting launch calls, promoting breakfast of champions calls. So the goal of all this is to create income bringing activities 
that create more exposures and more exposures that turn into new distributors that we can nurture and help tap root and create jades with and do jade hunting. And so we want lots of IBAs that create lots of exposures. If you have good daily method of operations and prioritizing your activity and productivity well, you're going to have lots of IBAs that will create lots of exposures. So phone time, what do we spend our phone time on and wrapping up? Maybe 15% of your time is calling the end palms, the newest possibilities of momentum, the new excited people in the downline, working with them, spending your priority time with them. Maybe 20% of your time following up with those sign-in sheets, you got sign-in sheets, lists and lists of those in your folder from all the PBRs you're doing, sign-in sheets, especially coming around to regional time. We're calling sign-in sheets and guests from PBRs we've done all month using the sign-in sheets. That's a key, maybe 20% follow-up time, right? So maybe you're scheduling an hour a day for that, right? And then maybe you're scheduling maybe three-way calls, maybe 50% of your time on the phone is three-way calls. If you can be doing two or three three-way calls a day, you're gonna be kicking butt. If you want real professional activity, top producer activity, man, five, six, seven, three-way calls, 10 three-way calls a day, oh my gosh, you're gonna be, everybody's gonna be signing up. People will be wondering what you're doing to make all this money. It's like, I'm talking to new people. Simple, so that's the priority. 50% of your time on three-way calls. And then maybe 10% of your time calling those leaders, supporting them, your leader projects, making sure they're squared away. And maybe 5% of your time getting customers, always gotta put a little bit of time, drive across town, give them some samples, meet up with them, make a couple calls, following up, getting those customers, right? And so that's the key. And so what are your 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. priorities? Because for me, the magic happens before 8 a.m. You know what I mean? I get so much done before 8 a.m. I get more done before 8 a.m. than most people get done all week. But for the average person, just 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. part-time work in the business, you know, three-way calls, that's gonna generate your new business. Top priority. Number two, presentations. If you're doing webinars, presentations. Webinars, do PBRs, where you're doing a presentation. That's the key, you're presenting, getting into doing presentations. Number three, you're helping your end palms. You're helping your end palms. You're calling the newest people saying, hey, can we schedule your PBR? You know, do, do you have time for, do, who do you have for me to talk to? Do you have any time to put me on a three-way call this today to, with anybody? You know, who can you put me on the phone with today? You know, you're asking that M pump, you know, you're pumping them up, getting them excited and getting them excited to schedule an appointment with you to meet up with them and make some calls, do a power hour. You know, you're, you're leaving them feeling good. Calling those end palms is a real key point. You're leaving them feeling good, feeling excited. More excited when they got off the phone with you than when they got on the phone with you. And you're following up with people, following up, that's the key. Lock, follow up is so important, signing sheets, you know, people that you've met, people that you've put into the pipeline with text messages. You know, follow up with other prospects from your reps that you've put on the phone, three-way calls with, you sent them the information, you told them you're gonna follow up with them. So keeping your follow-up very organized, not dumping so many people into the pipeline that we can't even follow up with them and they're all falling out and they're and now they're feeling like this isn't even as important as you told them it was because you peaked them three days ago and you haven't even followed up with them since because you got so busy getting letting the tail wag the dog. You wanna schedule your schedule, schedule your priorities based on productivity and based on what's the most effective use of your time. And then we're also at the end, we're using, you're using time for phase one. Phase one, personal phone calls, working on your list, sponsoring new people. If you can be a sponsor monster, you're gonna have a huge production in your business. But if you can do all the priorities right in nurturing your team and creating production from their production, not just creating new production, but creating production from the production you created last week, creating new production from the production you created last month, that's where the big momentum is gonna come from. So watch this video two, three times. You'll get more out of it every time you watch it. Watch my other videos about taprooting and about jade hunting. Watch my other video about activity versus productivity and duplication versus replication and how you can duplicate yourself as opposed to replicating yourself. And we'll see not every one of you guys, not just at the top, we're gonna see you over the top. Bye-bye.